Numbers chapter 11 verse 1 to 5. Numbers chapter 11 verse 1 to 5. 15. Chapter 11 verse 1 to 15. Thank you. Yeah. If you find, I can read it for you. I can read. Numbers chapter 11 verse 1 to 15. Now the people complained about their hardship in the hearing of the law. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outstruck of the camp, outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord and the fire died down and so that the place was called Tibera because the fire from the Lord had burned among them. The rebel with them began to crave the other food and again the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat, we remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also, the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost of our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. The manna was like a, a coriander and seed, and they looked like the lesson. The people went around gathering it, and they were around, so ground it, and they handled meal and were crushed it in the uh, mortar. They cooked it and poured or made it into the loaves. And it tasted like uh, something made with uh, olive oil. When the drove settled on the camp at night, the manna also came down. Moses heard the people of every family wailing at the entrance to their tent. The Lord became extremely angry, and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms? As a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised on earth to their ancestors, where can I get meat for all these people? They keep wailing to me, give some meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you are going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me right now. If I have found favor in your eyes, and do not let me face my own ruin. <laughs> you know this scripture. T this evening we're gonna study together. Stop blame and stop complain. Can you say, teacher, us stop complain, stop blame in Jesus' name? Say, teacher, us stop complain, stop blame in Jesus' name. Yeah. Do you know the people of Israel? They came out from Egypt. When they come out from Egypt, what was happening? What is what is uh, their main food in desert? Manna. Is a manna it come from where? Heaven. From heaven. And people eat the manna every day. How many years? It's very boring. I think when I came here, smell of a fish, very strong. And, <laughs> and I was wondering what, what kind of smell. And, and then they enjoyed a very nice uh, fish this evening. Did you enjoy it? Yeah? yeah. But smell is uh, very strong. <laughs> but people they add to the manna. But when they think about uh, when they think about Egypt, uh, they think about what garlic, leeks, and onion. All this meat, especially when you eat the garlic, is a very uh, very interesting. Garlic is a memory in your mind for a long long time. How many of you like a garlic? I like a garlic. Do you like a garlic bread? Yeah, I like a garlic. I like uh, you know garlic and onion, all these things. But people they think about that. Oh, we used to eat the garlic and all kind of uh, cucumber and very nice food. No cost, freely because we are slave. And the Egyptian they provide for all our need. Therefore, 
we enjoy the food, but now we are in desert. We eat the manna, they complain, they blame. Can I encourage you, when you become a born again Christian, your eating style needs to change. <laughs> How many understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I used to eat the I used to eat the dog. Dog was my favorite food a long time so when I was non Christian. Whenever you know but don't misunderstand uh, you used to have the, some special dog, the breeding dog for uh, meat. It's very delicious, very delicious. But when I become a born again Christian, I don't need a dog. And um, don't, don't, don't judge me. <laughs> you know, I, I can eat, all, but God changed my eating style. Not I talk about the food. You, you need to take, talk about the spiritual, spiritual food. Spiritual food is our Bible now. Do you know Israelite? Uh, these people they come to the they come to the desert, and they still looking for the all this worldly food. But God gave them the what manna. They need to satisfy it with the manna, but they don't. Yeah. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? When you become a born again Christian, your your hobby change, your lifestyle change, your even eating style change, your behavior change. Yeah. Everything change. Do you know that? Yeah. Transform. Transform. Yeah. Anybody knows the Joseph in the Bible? Yeah. In Old Testament, Joseph is like the representative of Jesus. Actually, Joseph's behavior is a behavior of Jesus. Joseph. Do you remember when Joseph was seventeen? He become a slave in Egypt, and then um, he become a prisoner in foreign country. Did Joseph blame his brothers? Yes or no? Did you find, if you find uh, any single scripture, Joseph blamed his brothers. Did Joseph blame the Potiphar's wife? Yes or no? No. You didn't find, you couldn't find it. Very interesting, Joseph, he didn't blame anybody. Even he was innocent. Even he was uh, right. He overcome the temptation evil one. But he ended up in prison. This is a very important. Joseph's behavior is like the behavior of Jesus. When Joseph met his uh, family, yeah? When Joseph met his, his brothers, do you know what Joseph say? I'm your brother. You sent him, do you think you, you sold me to Egyptian trader? No, no. God sent me. God sent me to Egypt to saving you, you see? Therefore, Joseph's life, he recognized that God is in control all the times. How many believe be that God is in control in your life? Yeah? Can you say to you, God is in control in your life? Say to each other, God is in control in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible speaks very clear, clearly. Don't complain. Don't blame. Do you know why people they complain? Because of <coughs> their feeling <coughs> not good. Why? Because everything is not doing according to their own desire. Yeah, and then the situation, the circumstance, not doing well according to their own desire. Uncomfortable, hard, difficult, and suffering. And then they blame people. They blame God. Actually, two areas. Blame God and blame people. Yeah, When people not doing well, I mean, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable. People easily to blame God and blame leader. Actually, the Bible clearly speak to us that it is a terrible sin in the eyes of the law. Blame and complain to somebody is a sin in the eyes of the law. Yeah. When do, do you know that when Adam and Eve committed the sins, what was happening? When Adam committed the sins, simple nature birth in his heart and when people get a simple nature automatically blame somebody automatically complain somebody when God asked Adam why you eat the, this fruit of good and evil what Adam say <coughs> woman give me but who who give this woman huh? who you give me this woman this woman give me. he blame God and blame his wife. Do you, do you understand? 
Adam blamed God and blamed Eve easily. And then even the Eve simple nature but and then she blamed whom? Snake. <laughs> blame. Can you say teach us stop blame and, and stop complain? Say teach us stop blame and stop complain in Jesus' name. Amen. This is uh, Israelite, uh, they have the problem and then difficulties, they don't satisfy it at all. And then they blame God and they complain before God. And then you know what, what did? God was so angry. Look at the Numbers chapter 11 m once again. <coughs> Numbers chapter 11, which verse is he, he God was angry? He was extremely angry. Which verse is it? Numbers chapter 11, verse. Uh, yeah? Yeah, verse, uh, verse 10. Yeah, the, the Lord becomes e exceedingly <laughs> angry. <laughs> he was so angry. Why? Why? People complain. Yeah. Yeah, ungrateful, <coughs> unsatisfied. But today, how can you, how can you kick out the, this blame spirit and complain spirit? How can you kick it out? Three things I can share with you. If you do these three things, uh, you can overcome the, this blame and complain spirit. Number one, you can content in any circumstance. Content. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7 and 8 say, For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Yeah? We came to this world with what? Nothing. Empty. Nothing. But we will die with what? Nothing. Empty. Empty. Nothing. Therefore, we have to content. But Israelites, did they content or not? They have a high expectation to eat the better food, eat the garlic, eat the onion, <laughs> cucumber, eat the fish, eat the meat, eat the all kind of food. But God gave them what? Manna. How many of you experience uh, you expect something, God give you only one thing, manna. Yeah. Have you heard about that? You want to do these things and that things you want, but uh, oh God allow you only one things. You cannot do any other things. Very prostrate uh, 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 and uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, these people they complain. Why? We used to eat the garlic. We used to eat the onion, nice food, but now only manna, boring. Pastor speak to the congregation, read the Bible, read the Bible. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> tell me other things. <laughs> but I tell you, read the Bible. Can you say to you, read the Bible in Jesus? Say to each other, read the Bible. <clears throat> Can you read the Bible? Amen. You know, the church is look like a very boring. Why? Because of the same thing to preach. <laughs> preach the Jesus. People expect. Don't speak to me about the Jesus only. Speak to me on other things. Jesus is uh, always you speak about Jesus. Oh, better. Some other things tell me. <laughs> Can I encourage you? These people, Israelite, they stay in in in, de in desert. Yeah, manna is more than enough. Can you say Amen? Amen. Manna is more than enough. Yeah. This is how God is working. Yeah? But it's very important when you live in this world to, to satisfy it in any circumstance and content in any circumstance. Yeah, if you don't content, yeah, you'll be big trouble. Easily blame. Easily complain. Content in any circumstance. If you content in any circumstance, I know you can overcome the darkness. You can overcome this blame and complain spirit. Yeah, it's very important, content, content in any situation, content with anybody, anybody. Yeah, you may 
in, when I stayed together with the 21 people for nine years in Brixton. Patrick, you know that way I used to, yeah, in, in Picarage. Eight bedroom house, big house, he knows. <coughs> 21 people. And do you know how many people come from street? Six or seven people from street, which is one third of people, they are not normal. They come from the terrible background, gangsters, drug addicts, alcoholic, prostitutes. All is not normal. 21 people live together. Two thirds of people, around the 14, 15, is a normal. But other six, seven people, not normal. What was what I saw? Fighting sometimes. Punch each other in a in small com community. 21 people live together for nine years. I saw the big fighting. Oh, it's terrible. Terrible. But they don't contend with each other. Someone tries to kill himself in the, in the community. I saw the all kinds of things. And then somebody asked me, Pastor Paul, why don't bring the, these people from the street, bring the very good Christian to stay together in our community? Everybody will be happy. You bring the, some strange people, that is why two thirds of people, they are unhappy, complain. I understand what they talk about, but I have good news. The, what is good news? Do you know, through these people, God wants to change the normal people. D do you understand what is my point? And then what is good news is uh, normal people, they need to learn how to overcome the, these uh, difficult people, vulnerable people. Do you know, normal people, they need to know how to serve them. They need to know how to work together with these people. Even in, you know, in we have the maid, la men's room and ladies room, room. When there's some strange man come, people complain to me. Pastor Paul, I cannot stay together with this man and that woman, whatever. I understand. But you need to grow. <laughs> if you are Jesus, if you no longer live, Christ lives in you. I believe that you can, you can stay with any kind of people. How many can you say amen? Only happy people. <laughs> 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 Pastor Paul, practically is not easy. But I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm an example. I stay together with this kind of people. All kind of people. Some crazy people. I still remember. I announced them. <clears throat> Anybody stay now, when I stay together with 21 people, man cannot go up to the ladies' room. M lady cannot come to the woman's room. <clears throat> if you want to see, Go to the uh, dining room and talk. One black guy opened the door and they bring the one one lady to his room. Oh, do you know what happened? Because I don't want to see something happening in, in, in the community. I knocked the door. They never opened. Do you know what I did? I called the police. Two police come and police knocked the door. They didn't open the door. And police told me this is no no the criminal uh, thing. This is what on on a, on a civil. And they say if they break the window and punch you, and they call the police. This is uh, we are not just come here to knock the door to come out this uh, girl woman. The police need to be angry with me. <laughs> They're gone. And what I did, I asked all our our, our members. Every two hours, uh, you need to knock the door. Every, all night, all night. Two people knock the door all night in front of the door. Sit down on the chair and knock, bang, bang, all night. Because I don't want uh, the girl to conceive the baby, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what you All night, uh, see, I think four, five people, six people, they sit in front of the door. Hello! Don't sleep together! <laughs> Come out! <laughs> All night. Next day, seven o'clock, six, seven o'clock. He say, first of all, now I'm leaving." And then they couldn't sleep properly, and uh, he moved the, all the things he gone out. And then people thought, "Oh, first of all, you are a very hard man and very strict." No, no, I'm just telling the truth. Do you understand? We have the, some regulation, we have the, some rule, but they have to respect. They didn't respect. 
what should I do? Continue knock the door. And uh, finally he left. But look, when you live together with uh, somebody in, a, in any circumstance, can you contend? Yeah? Look at the numbers, chapter 14, 26 to 30. Do you know what God say? People, they complain and they're against God and blame God. Do you know what God say? You complain to me, they say to God, oh, it's much better, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. God say, okay, I listen to you, I hear what you say, I can help you, I can kill you, you're gonna die. God killed them. Look, Numbers chapter 14, 26 to 30. The Lord say to Moses and Aaron, how long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of this uh, grumbling Israelite. So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. In this willingness, your bodies will fall, and every one of you, 20 years old or more, who was counted in the census and who has grumbled against me. Not one of you will enter the land I sword with a uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb and son of uh, uh, Jehanum and Joshua son of Nun. Only two people, Caleb and Joshua, enter the promised land, those who are over 20 years old. But anybody who are 20 years old and over against the God died in the wilderness. God hate this is blame and complain. God hate. Do you know blame meaning? Then I check the uh, Cambridge uh, dictionary. Blame meaning is a feel or declare that someone or something is uh, responsible for the fault or wrong. Which means they blame God. You are wrong. God, you are wrong. You fault. You mistake. <laughs> that kind of. Uh, expresses a blame. Blame God. Do you understand? And then complain meaning in English dictionary is a statement that something is the unsatisfactory or unacceptable. Yeah? Unacceptable. Therefore against it. Blaming and complaining are like a an addiction actually. Have you seen somebody? It's like a, automatically <laughs> they blame. Blame and complain is like a friend, yeah? Actually, if you're studying about the blame and complain deep inside, uh, they don't, they, these people, they don't trust in God at all. If it's a lie, trust in God. Do you think they blame God? They complain to God? No, they shouldn't. They don't believe in God, yeah? How many believe that God is good? If you surely believe that God is good all the time, yeah, do you think God will give you good things? Yes or no? Do you believe that? God will give you best of best. But unfortunately, people, they don't believe that. God is good. They don't believe that. They don't trust in God. If you believe and trust in God, in Jesus, and then you expect to receive the good things, do you think it's a, uh, uh, Joseph complained to God, blame God? I overcome the temptation of evil one. When Potiphar's wife tempted to, to me, I overcome. But I get a prison sentence. Did you, Joseph blame God? Complain to God? Yes or no? no? Joseph knows God is good and then God is working together for good. All things working together for good. Because I love God and I have the purpose of the Lord. Without the president sentence, Joseph, he never become a prime minister. <laughs> Do you understand? The prison sentence is like a step, stepping stone to become a prime minister in Egypt. But unfortunately, human mind, human eyes only see the, the your circumstance. <laughs> yeah? What you see is a temporary. But my prayer for your eyes, open your spiritual eyes to see the beyond the, your temporary situation. Can you say amen? Today I saw the rain. When you're raining there, what do you see? 
you see the rain and cloud. dark cloud. But beyond the cloud, what 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 what, what is it? Sunshine. sunshine. People they don't see the sunshine. The they don't see the, the dome. Sunshine. Yeah. The dome. Dome. That is the sunshine. There is a sun in there. Do you understand? I know. But let God help us. You know, people they blame, people they complain, and then when they complain, complain mean they don't trust in God. They don't believe in God. Yeah, they blame somebody. They blame someone. Do you know? Somebody too much blame, too much complain. Do you know they could not control their blame and complain? Do you know what they do? They touch what? Yeah. Alcohol. They touch what? Yeah. Drugs and heroin. They smoking. They cannot control their heart. They cannot control their heart temper. They cannot control the, their heart. They cannot control this blame and complain. And then they're looking for some other things, and they become addiction. They become drug addict, alcoholic. I was studying all this afternoon how people they become <laughs> addiction. You know, they are not satisfied with their situation. They are not satisfied with their family. When their mother and father always fighting, fighting, fighting. Oh, I fed up with my mother and my dad. Oh. Drug is very nice. You take a drug and become drug addict. Oh, alcohol is good. Because forget about something and then become alcoholic. Too much complaint to father and mother. Too much blame somebody. They don't copy with this kind of situation. And then they, they want to rely on something. Rely on the drugs, alcohol, rely on the, some other addiction. Oh, fed up about this situation. I hate. Okay, what shall I look for? Oh, gambling. This is very nice. I know the one Korean pastor. When he was 20, he touched alcohol, he become alcoholic. When he was 30, then when you wake up, he say that 10 years gone. <laughs> Do you know what I talk about, who I'm talking about? The Korean pastor. Now he's working in London, wonderful man of God. He say 10 years gone. When he touches alcohol, he becomes alcoholic for 10 years ago. Time gone quickly because of this addiction. Same thing. When people blame and complain, they become uh, alcoholic, drug addict, and then gambler, all kind of addiction. And then they cannot be uh, free anymore. They controlled by this addiction things. Therefore, this is my best prayer, my earnest prayer for helping the addiction people. They need to meet Jesus personally. If they meet Jesus, if they encounter with the Lord Jesus, yeah, they are able to come out from addiction. Can you say amen? amen. amen. You can help in them. Do you know what is my job? I help all the brothers and sisters. They can meet Jesus. In the beginning, they meet Jesus through Paul song, through you. But later, they can talk to the Jesus directly. Like the Samaritan woman. Do you remember Samaritan woman? She went to Samaria. I met the Messiah. I met the Messiah. And then people, they come to Jesus. And what people say? The Samaritan people. Do you know what, what they say? Thank you very much. You introduced to us our Messiah. You, 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 not only your Messiah, our Messiah, but now you don't, we don't need you. I lis we listen to the word of Jesus directly. I'm a pastor. Do you know what is my job, main job? My main job, please, you need to pray for me. Through me, let all the congregation, they talk with the Jesus directly. Amen. They need to have a deeper relationship with God directly. Can you say amen? amen? This is my prayer. Wonderful to come here Wednesday Bible study. Good to come morning prayer meeting. It's good. But can I encourage you? Every day of your life, you must have a deeper relationship with God. Not try to meet Jesus through me anymore. Do you know, you need to teach your children. Your children try to meet Jesus through mommy and through... No, no. In the beginning, maybe, because they are baby Christian in the beginning. 
But when they grow, they need to talk to the Jesus directly. They can spend time with Almighty God. Yeah? This is the proper way. Actually, somebody who are drug addict, alcoholic, this is the main problem is a spiritual problem. This is a spiritual problem. You know, this Numbers chapter 11, this message is a spiritual message. Not talking about uh, food, not talking about the garlic or the onion. This is uh, the message. The spiritually, these people, they don't satisfy at all. They don't content. When they don't content, what happened? They end up in prison while people end up in, in, in criminal things. I was preaching in the in the Brixton prison uh, uh, in prison. Do you know how many percent of were from Jamaica? Do you know that? <laughs> Seventy percent. <laughs> Do you know <laughs> when I preach around among the nine hundred prisoners, seventy percent, around six hundred people are from Jamaica. And I say to them, I teasing them, this is not Brixton prison, this is Jamaican prison, <laughs> and they laugh. And then you know some Jamaican brothers they say to me, Do you know what they say in the prison? The poor father of Britain, these British people, they're stealing all the resources from Jamaica. Therefore, we came to London. We are right to steal something in London. <laughs> they, they justify. <laughs> Can you imagine? We are right because of the poor father of UK, the British people, they steal something from Jamaica. Therefore, we are right to steal something in, 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 in London, in UK. They are not satisfied. They are not content. In, in UK. That is why they steal. Yeah. If you see the if you see the very nice car in Brixton area, guess young boy, maybe early twenty. So expensive car. Who are they? Can you guess? Drug dealer. Drug dealer. Yeah, you used to be a policeman, you know them. The drug dealer. They you know they get a lot of money. They are not satisfied. They are not content with what they have. They are not content. The Bible says if you have the enough food and cloth, you must be content. How many of you content with what you have now? Yeah? Can you say, teacher, that you must be content with what you have? Say, teacher, this. you must be content with what you have. Amen? Yeah? Very important. If you have the content yeah, in your heart, yeah? that means you believe that God is in control. You believe that God has got the initiative in your life. You believe that God is in control of your life. Yeah? For many, many, I have been here for 30 years. I think so, for almost over 20 years. Over 20 years, I was difficult financially, materially, physically, so difficult. But I know. God is in control. God is good. Did I complain to God? Never. Ever. Why? Because God is good. I know. God training me. All these things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. You know that. Anybody know that? I can do all things through him who give me strength. Everybody knows. You love me, eh? I can do all things through him who strengthen me. Who Jesus strengthen me. I can do all things. Praise God. Anybody remember verse 11 and 12? Philippians chapter 4, 11 and 12 is most important. If you understand 11 and 12, automatically you can speak verse 13. I can do all things through Jesus who gave me strength. But verse 11 and 12, what the Bible say? Paul say, I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content. You see, content. Whatever the circumstance, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what is is have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gave me strength. You know, Paul say, I learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. This is the secret key. That is the secret of power. Paul, he knows what does mean content. He was in, in 
Philippi prison. He arrived in Philippi. First area when you arrive in Europe. Watch out for He kicking out the, the demons from young girl. And the young girls made a lot of money because she is a, a fortune teller. And the owner of this woman, the young girl, and then put the, uh, this man, Paul and, and, Paul and, uh, and Silas. Paul and Silas inside the prison. What Paul did? Anybody knows that? <coughs> Acts chapter 16. What he did? He was uh, praying and singing, you see. Two things, praying and singing. He content in prison, <laughs> in hardship, in difficulties. In the book of James, say, anybody is trouble, let them pray. pray. Is anybody happy, let them sing songs. What Paul did inside the prison? Praying and singing. Praying and singing. He was troubled. That is why he prayed. You understand that. How can you sing it? He was so happy, actually. <laughs> because he got a terrible persecution. What the Lord Jesus say? Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to, uh, 10 to 12. If anybody insult you, persecute you, and then, you know, falsely against you, what is your behavior? What is your attitude? Rejoice and be glad, you see. Because the people beat the pole and the chain and bleeding, every area. He was what? He was a rejoice. That was singing. Do you understand? Rejoice always. And he was praying and singing. Can you say to each other, in any circumstance, praying and singing together. Say to each other, in any circumstance, you have to pray and singing together. Okay? Not only pray, singing. <laughs> Paul, he was praying and singing in, in the prison. Yeah? You have to contend in all your circumstances. This is very, very important. If you contend in all your circumstances, you know how to overcome the, all the darkness. Yeah? And then number two, you have to understand the heart of God. Yeah? You need to understand the heart of God. How can you overcome the you know, blame? And the complain, understand the heart of God. Yeah? People of Israel, they don't understand the heart of God. That is why blame God and complain to God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 to 5. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 2 to 5. <coughs> Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his command. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your cloth did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that uh, as a man discipline his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. You need to understand the heart of God. What is heart of God? Do you know, 40 years time, God want to training the uh, Jewish people, 40 years. You have to know the four things, four things from heart of God. Number one, God humble you. Humble you. Do you understand the heart of God? Why are you eating the manna only every day? Manna, manna, manna. Why? Humble you. You need to know. They don't understand the heart of God. Number two, keep his command. Obey. Keep his command. Do you understand? You have to understand the heart of God. Keep his command. Number three, man does not live by bread or wrong, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Don't live by bread alone, but by what? Every word come from mouth of God. Not some, every word come from mouth of God. It's very important. Finally, the Lord your God discipline you. Can you see that? The Lord your God discipline you. That is why you are in the desert for 40 years. Humble you, help you to obey, and the man does not live by bread alone, and then 
God wants to discipline you. But they don't know the heart of God. If you don't know the heart of God, automatically you blame God and complain something. <coughs> Do you understand? Anybody knows that there's a many, many container ship and a ferry and crew, all the ship in the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean. Yeah? So many ship, even now it's moving, like airplane moving in the, in the sky, in the, in the sea now. Which country is it? The 60% of the, the ship made by which country? Guess. We can easily guess. People thought China, no. Korea, Korea where I came from. <laughs> Why we co South Korea made this uh, uh, ship? Because of North Korea. We love to go to North Korea, through the North Korea, to go to China and Russia, go all to Europe. But North Korea is like a blocking, blocking start. Do you understand? You know the peninsula, peninsula of uh, Korea, yeah? Korean Peninsula, we cannot go out on the top. Why? Because of North Korea. Because North Korea blocking, what are we doing? We need to go to all of the world. All of the world. How? By ship. <laughs> that is why we made a lot of ship. Uh, anybody, I don't know, how can you call the ice breaking ship? How can you call? That is made in Korea <laughs> first time. Many, many years ago to go to North Pole or something. Therefore, South Korean people need to give thanks for North Korea. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> Without the North Korean that kind of uh, dictatorship, we never ever made uh, this kind of uh, the ship. <laughs> Actually, in 1970, 1980, the great revival in, in South Korea, the church is grown. And there's top five uh, revivalists in, in, in Korea. And number one, number one is uh, Pastor Paul yong gi He died last year. You know, four. But number five is another guy from North Korea. Who is this man? He's not born again. But this guy helped us to South Korea to wake up spiritually. Anybody knows? The founder of North Korea, Kim Il sung, <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> because of this enemy, <laughs> all the South Korean Christians wake up to pray. Therefore, it's a very ironical, God allowed Satan to live in this world. <laughs> How many understand what I'm talking about? Yeah? Because of Satan, yeah, you wake up actually. Because of Satan disturbing you, time to fasting and pray. Do you understand? The Bible speaks. If you eating well, everything doing well, you will become very proud. And then uh, you forget the Lord your God. How many understand? That is why God allow you have some hardship and difficulties. Good for you. Why? To wake up. How many understand what I'm talking about? Yeah? I wish God removed all the Satan right now, put into hell, and then uh, we can enjoy the heaven every day. Unfortunately, sooner or later you you, your body will be uh, uh, two times bigger than you, <laughs> fat, <laughs> and then everybody, you know, instead of you, you live in a holy life, uh, unfortunately, you lose your mind, focus on Jesus. Yeah. It's very important. How many of you have a deeper relationship with, with Almighty God when you are difficulties and suffering? Yeah. You recognize that? It's not my story, not your story, what the Bible says actually. Yeah? When you are so difficulties and hardship, you are the one to cry out and pray. Yeah? That is why God uh, challenged the, 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 the Israelite, understand the heart of God. Can you say to each other, let us understand the heart of God. Say to each other, let us understand the heart of God. Knowing Jesus is very, very important, knowing Jesus. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, 
He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us know Jesus. Actually, let us press on to knowing Jesus. Press on to knowing Jesus. Hosea chapter 6, verse 6 say, I, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offering. God's desire for mercy, yeah, and not sacrifice. Also, burnt offering is very, very good. But knowing Jesus is better than burnt offering. Knowing God is most important in our lives. Yeah, why you come to our church? Why you come to the Bible study? Knowing Jesus. Spend your time. Spend your money. Spend your energy. Spend your, all your life to knowing Jesus. This is so precious, so worthy. Can you say to each other, knowing Jesus is most important in your life. Say to each other, knowing Jesus is most important in your life. Amen. Amen. So important. Why you read the Bible? Knowing Jesus. Understand the heart of God. Why you pray? Understand God. Knowing Jesus. Understand the desire of God. That is why you pray. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. Jeremiah 20, chapter 9, 23 and 24. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says. <clears throat> Let them not the wise boast about their wisdom, or strong boast their strength, or rich boast their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this. What you boast about is that they have understanding, no God, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, righteousness on earth. For those, these I delight, declares the Lord. Don't boast about your wisdom, about your strength, and your riches. Don't boast. It. Unfortunately, people boasting about their strength and riches and their wisdom. Don't boasting about these things. But boasting about what? You understand to knowing God, who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. Knowing God. Can you say to each other, boasting about that you understand knowing God? Say to each other, boasting about your understand to knowing God. Yeah, if you understand the God's heart, how wonderful. Therefore, you know, it's so precious. If you spend your time, your money, your energy, anything, your life for knowing Jesus. So precious. If you understand God, you don't blame God. If you understand God, you don't complain to God. And you repent the sins. Because you used to blame God and your family, your wife and your husband, children. Repent. And you can start a new life. If you understand God, and uh, you will please in God. Yeah? If you know God, you know how to glorify God. You know how to please in Him. You know how to exalt Him. How to honor Him. You know, because you know Him. Therefore, you need to pray to God, Lord, help me to understand you. Help me to knowing you. Can you say to each other, God will help you to knowing Jesus. Say to each other, God will help you to knowing Jesus. <coughs> God will help you. you know, I think two weeks ago, I cut the, uh, my sister's uh, nail, and then somebody gave me the, some liquid and then, then, then to do it. And then last Sunday, I, I told you, wait, I, I couldn't find it. And this evening, please wait for me. I will do it for you, yeah? This evening, for treatment for your nail, yeah? Your toe. And then, because I know Jesus, I know Jesus, I'm willing to serve you. Yeah, do you understand? I'm willing to serve you. Yeah, how about you? You are here to serving others. Thank you. You gave me a lot of uh, clothes and all these things. We bless the African people in Africa. We thank God. We send everything. Thanks be to God. Can you say, teacher, I'm here to serve you? Say, teacher, I'm here to serve you. Amen. Please say, your attitude should be changed. You need to serve me. You serve me. No, that is totally wrong attitude in the eyes of the Lord. I'm here to serve you and serve one another. This is a proper attitude. If you understand the God, your life is transformed. Jesus said, learn from me. I am what? I am humble and 
gentle, learn from me. Learn from me, which means you learn from Jesus, live like Jesus. Actually, God hate, God hate uh, blame and complain. No more blame and complain in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10, and find out what pleased the Lord. When you met Jesus, when you understand the Almighty God, yeah, you find out how to please in God. And you don't try to please man anymore. <coughs> you will please in Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. I'm telling you, if you please in Jesus, yeah, what's going to happen? If you please in Jesus, in the beginning, look like they, you are not pleasing man. Some of your neighbor, your friend, the family upset because of you. You're only pleasing God. But later, they will understand. Thank you very much. When you please in God, automatically, God changed their life. They understand you. They will glorify God together with you. Amen. Yeah. Do you remember? John the Baptist said, I must what? And Jesus must increase. This is a proper prayer in our life. Unfortunately, we pray, I must increase. I don't care you decrease one. <laughs> no, this is totally long prayer. You have to pray to the Lord, I must decrease. Let Jesus increase in my life. Amen? If Jesus increase in your life, your life will prosper. Your life will transform. Can you confess to each other, I must decrease. Jesus must increase in my life. Say to each other, I must decrease. Jesus must increase in my life. Yeah, this is proper proclaim it. Finally, how can you overcome the blame and complain spirit? Fix your eyes on Jesus every second, every moment. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 say, Fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfect of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Fix your eyes on Jesus. How often? Yeah? All the times. Every moment. Every second. Yeah? Especially in any situation, good or bad, doesn't matter. Any situation, you have to fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Do you know that your situation is disturbing you many, many times? Yeah? How many of you experience? You try to pray and then your mobile phone ringing <laughs> and you try to do something somebody send a text message somebody call you and blah do you understand what should you do fix your eyes on jesus fix your eyes on jesus i have the, my prayer room under the stairs and then i there's a signboard and then when i go inside please do not knock do not call me <laughs> my wife not knock the door <laughs> why because i i spend time with the jesus no more yeah. It's very important. Fix your eyes on Jesus in any circumstance. Any circumstance. Sometimes, two times, uh, you, 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 you are innocent. You are nothing wrong. But people disturbing you, people persecute you, people accuse you. And then, you know, what shall you do? If you fix your eyes on that person, automatically blame that person and complain to that person. What shall you do? Somebody complained to you, somebody rejected you, somebody upset to you. What should you do? Open your eyes to fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen? If you fix your eyes on Jesus, instead of fix your eyes on some problem, fix your eyes on circumstance, fix your eyes on, on somebody, never ever set them free from complaint and blame. How many understand what I'm talking about? And you say, teacher, you need to fix your eyes in any circumstance. Say, teacher, you need to fix your eyes in any circumstance. Amen. I still remember I was preaching in, under the Waterloo Bridge. 60 or 70 homeless drug addicts staying there, alcoholics people. But unfortunately, six or seven gangsters came to me. They beat me by wooden stick and metal bar all of my body for over 40 minutes. What did I do? Guess. I fixed my eyes on whom? On Jesus. Because I fixed my eyes on Jesus, do you think I hate them? I curse them? 
Did I pray to God, oh God, kill them? Did I pray to God, oh God, revenge them? No. I ask you, Lord, forgive their sins. Why? Because I fixed my eyes on Jesus. Do you remember when Stephen died? And he fixed his eyes on Jesus. When people they stoning to kill him, he fixed his eyes on Jesus. What happened? Heaven opened. And he said, No, Jesus, stand up. You see, in any situation, fix your eyes on Jesus. If somebody upset you, that's the best time to fix your eyes on Jesus. If somebody terribly, terribly attacked you, fix your eyes on Jesus. Look like it's very hard. But I tell you, Jesus said, my yoke is what? Easy. My body is uh, light. Automatically, your body is uh, rolling away from you when you fix your eyes on Jesus. Your problem is no more your problem. Yeah? You know, in these days, uh, you know, all the energy company, you know, gas, electric company, even water company, you know, I think within, within six months, change. And then they're asking us so much money for Proverbs company. It look like uh, they, we already paid, but they are asking, cheat, chasing up to us. What should we do? Fix our eyes on Jesus. <laughs> if I fix our eyes on the company, how do I feel? Angry. <laughs> feel upset, feel angry. What they, then I fix my eyes on Jesus. And I know that the company, they're, uh, they're their mobile, their phone number, I'm blocking them. <laughs> they already paid. They don't understand what you're talking about. They already paid. They continue chasing up. Well, we will need to go to court. This you know, they can. We we easily to win if they continue disturb disturbing us. But what should we do? Fix our eyes on Jesus. Why you pray? Why you pray? Do you know if you don't pray? Easily, you fix your eyes on your problem. <laughs> fix your eyes on your circumstance. <laughs> fix uh, your eyes on that person who made you angry. But when you pray, what, what does it mean? When you pray, it means you fix your eyes on Jesus. Look at the Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right and right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in Christ, in Christ, uh, Christ in God. Yeah. Set your heart on things where, above. Set your mind on things above. Yeah. Your heart, your mind on things above. Yeah. Where is your heart now? Focus on Jesus, on heaven. Think, set your mind, set your mind on things above all the times. Yeah, all the times. Because of I set my, my mind on things above, set your, my heart on things above, I stand in front of, or, or in front of a certain station, I can see the some people. For me, my physical body <laughs> in front of a station, but my spirit is in heaven. <laughs> Then I connected together with Almighty God. I know the one lady, one of our wonderful sisters, Sister Mercy. And she came from Fiji. And uh, she met me. Hello, Pastor. You heard one another this morning. She was, uh, she was looking for water baptism for a long, long time. And uh, she said, Pastor Paul, thank you so much. We're going to have the water baptism this coming Sunday on 15th. She was very excited. Thanks be to God. Please uh, remember three things to overcome the blame and complain. Number one, contempt with uh, what you have now. Number two, understand the heart of God. Number three, fix your eyes on Jesus all the time. If you do it, yeah, you can kick out the blame spirit. You can keep kicking out the complaint spirit. You have to have some habit. You have to have the habit to understand Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your thought on Jesus. Look at the Hebrew chapter 3 verse 1 saying, Hebrew chapter 3 verse 1, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thought on Jesus, whom you are acknowledged as you are our apostle and high priest. Yeah? 
Fix your thought on Jesus. How often? Every moment. Fix your thought on Jesus all the times. If you fix your thought on Jesus, I'm telling you, you can overcome the circumstance. You can overcome the, the world. You can overcome the demonic power. You can overcome the darkness. Now is the time. Yeah. Why you come here to study the Bible? Remember, from now on, I kicking out the blame spirit and then, you know, the complaint spirit. Of course, we can telling the truth for your family according to the word of the law, like Nathan telling the truth for, for King David. It's, there's no complaint. There's no blame. No, just telling the truth in love of Jesus is different. Remember three things: be content with what you have, be understand the heart of God, and fix your eyes on Jesus. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We understand your word. Help us to overcome the blame and complaint and in this world. And we content with the, any circumstance. We understand the heart of God. And then, Lord, we fix our eyes on Jesus all the times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you.